we truly thank you for this amazing time that you have given us. Father God, you've given us the opportunity to not only study your word and study your way and study your will, but Father, you've given us the opportunity to see your son. You've given us the opportunity to have breath in our lungs to be able to speak to your people. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that now you will lower me down. And Lord, that you will stand up and do the work through me. For this is your will and your word, not mine. But Father God, help me to be obedient to thy will and to thy word. We pray, Lord, for those that are here in congregation. And we pray, Lord, for those that are yet watching live and those that will watch throughout the remainder of however long these posts last on social media. We pray for them, Lord, that, that the word does a great work wherever it is. And Lord, let it be known that you don't even need social media to do your will. It's just another medium, but you are great. And we thank you for your love and for your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Grateful to again to be here standing before you. Um, I have uh, been working on some some series. The Lord had just kind of laid it in my heart to uh, teach the word a little bit different. Um, I haven't done many series or, or part ones or part twos, but this is what the Lord has, has given me uh, several weeks back, probably a couple months ago, actually. And um, I've been praying on when he wanted me to launch uh, part one of this series that we will call What's the Big Deal? And so as I prayed about it, um, the pastor opened up the the opportunity for me to bring the message today, it kept resonating heavily in my spirit that it was time. Amen. Amen. It was time. Hallelujah. And I am one to want to hide behind the word and hide behind the work of the Lord Amen. because I don't want to get ahead of him. That's right. And I want him to be able to use me. Yeah. And so today, um, as we jump into this series of part one, and, and it'll be whenever I get a an opportunity to bring the word in its five parts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we'll be able to uh, dive into God's word in, in, in as often as I get a chance to do so to tie all of it back together on what's the big deal. Mm -hmm. Today in this first part, we want to talk about prolonged problems Amen. of what's the big deal. Amen. Understanding that we have some prolonged problems. As most of us have probably already know and are aware the book of Romans was penned by the Apostle Paul. I've said this before. But completely inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Paul's audience was primary, primarily to the church at Rome. But it was a great and impactful message for everyone, especially those who are unbelievers. God used this vessel named, known to us as the Apostle Paul to informed the world that since Adam chose to be disobedient, humans have also followed the same path to live sinful and selfish lives. Amen. The people of Israel tried to obey God and follow the law, but they didn't succeed in their attempt. And many of them failed miserably. God had made it clear in this book that there were some prolonged problems. Amen. Yeah. And that man's sinfulness could only be addressed by having a genuine faith in Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. By having a clear understanding that Jesus came to die yeah. for mankind. Amen. To get back to the Father. Yeah. To many, not following Christ is of no significance. Because life seems to be full of pleasure, glory, freedom, and its own self-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is that my niece back there? <coughs> amen, 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 amen. amen. <laughs> that routine working pretty good for my eyes. That's all. <laughs> amen. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> we can categorize the book of Romans into eight distinct outlines. First outline is uh, known as the greetings and the introduction. The, the second outline is the overall theme 
of Romans. The third outline is the condemnation and the, the need of God's righteousness and not of our own. Whoa. The fourth outline, justification or the provision of God's righteousness. The fifth outline is the sanctification or the demonstration of God's righteousness. The sixth outline talks about restoration, Israel reception of God's righteousness. The seventh outline is the application, the behavior of God's righteousness. And finally, in the eighth outline, the conclusion, which, can, which includes the greeting and the benediction given by the Apostle Paul to the workers of the church. Today on what we call Palm Sunday, we will briefly look into this fourth outline, which encompasses uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 21, all the way through Romans chapter 5, verse 21. And as we begin the first of it, at least these five sermon series I'm working on with the same overall title, but different sub-themes over the course, I want to be able to help us understand more and more that it is a big deal when someone asks. What's the big deal? Amen. Our focus this morning is right in the middle of Romans chapter 5 because it paints a very stark picture for us that begins with the fall of man and sadly how we've all been affected by such a great fall and why we should come to realize had it not been for Jesus, Amen. we were eternally doomed with no chance of recovery. Had it, had it not been for Jesus, is that some people over there? Amen, amen. We, amen. We would, I'm going to leave them off, but I'm working pretty good. Um, we would have not had a chance for recovery. If I go back to the subtitle of Prolonged Problems, you will note that verses 12 through 14, 15b, 16a and b, 17a, 18a, and 19a, will completely wrap up this message. Amen. 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 That man, since the great fall, has had a long history <laughs> of prolonged sin problems. Come on, somebody. Let, let's, let, let's walk through this thing, shall we? Uh, if you don't believe me, let's, let's look at these verses. Verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Yeah, yeah. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, Nevertheless. death reigned from Adam uh -huh. to Moses, yeah, yeah. even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Watch verse 15, paraphrasing, it says, For if through the offense of one, many be dead. Uh -huh. Then we skip down and look at verse 16, it says, And not as by the one, one that sinned, so is the guilt. For the judgment uh -huh. was by one to condemnation. Uh -huh. Then look at verse 17, it says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Amen. Oh, look at 18 and 19, 8. Therefore, as, be, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Mm -hmm. And 19a says, for as by one man's disobedience, yeah. many were made sinners. Yeah. Now let me ask you quickly, is there any questions as to whether or not we had issues? Yeah. <laughs> you got questions? Okay, amen. I thought I heard a yes. Maybe it was a yeah, no. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, we had some issues. It, it's no questions at all that, that we had. Because the reality is that God tells us that Adam's fall was in fact a domino effect. <laughs> amen. You know what dominoes are, right? We're not talking about playing dominoes. We're talking about how they stack them up and they hit the one, Sister Maria, and then they all fall. Amen. But it was a domino effect that affected the rest of the world. Yeah, it was a domino effect that affected the rest of mankind. It death reigned from Adam to Moses. Let's stop and take a look at it this way. That means if death reigned from just a short window between Adam and Moses, Sister Thornton, the fall of Adam made death universal. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, when, 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 
because of what Adam did, yeah. death came to all of us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't escape it. And, and every man from Adam to Moses was subject to die because of an inherited sinful nature. Yeah. Everybody yeah. was subject to die because of this inherited sinful nature. Even those, as verse 14 indicates, who didn't sin perhaps willfully after Adam or before the Mosaic law, they were still under the effects yeah. of sin itself. Yeah. Amen. Even, even what, it, what, it, what it means is even before they had the Mosaic law, because Adam fell, uh -huh. death clock was ticking. Yeah. Amen. God help us see this clearly. Adam was given the assignment, watch this, to tend the garden, uh -huh. to keep it and to work in it as God commanded. But when Adam shifted from God's desire mm -hmm. to his own thoughts and desires, the spiritual train that Adam was on derailed. Uh -huh. <laughs> it derailed off the track that God had originally placed it on. Right. And thus, prolonged problems Amen. started to begin. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, had Adam, who was with Eve at the time of her deception from the serpent, stood on God, God's commandment to not eat of that tree, uh -huh. we wouldn't be in the mess that we were in today. Amen, amen. amen. And Adam, Adam, the scripture says, she gave it to Adam who was with her. Amen. I know y'all was, was thinking about it. She gave it to Adam to eat who was with her. Now, if she had eaten and she dropped dead, that would have been a good time for Adam to take, I told you so. <laughs> would have been a good time for him to say, I told you. I told, but Adam didn't do that. Amen. Adam, Adam had his own desires because the scriptures say they saw that the tree was good. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, so, it, so it, it, it messed us up. And we're still been in that mess. But let's, let's go back to, to verse 15. Uh, for verse 15, it says, for, for if through the offense of one, that's Adam, mm -hmm. many be dead, that's us. Y'all right. gonna see what I'm going in a second. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, and not as it was by one, that's Adam, that sinned, uh, so is the gift. Well, because Adam sinned, there's no gift for us. It only would have been through destruction. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, uh, uh, for the judgment was by one, that's Adam, to condemnation. For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, amen, uh, death reigned by one, that's Adam. Uh, therefore, as by the offense of one, that's Adam, amen, judgment came upon all men, that's us, amen, uh, to condemnation. For as by one man, one man. that's Adam, uh -huh. disobedience, many, oh. that's us, oh. were made sinners. Did you catch that? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Little, can we walk through it one more time? Uh, watch verse 15. Um, uh, for if through the offense of one, that's Adam, Amen. Uh, many be dead, that's us. That's us. Mm -hmm. And not as it was by one that, that sinned, that's Adam. Yeah. So is the free, so is the gift. That means it's no gift for us. Only we would have been subject to destruction. For the judgment was by one, that's Adam, to condemnation. For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned by one, that's still Adam. Therefore, by the offense of one, that's Adam, judgment came upon all men, that's us, to condemnation. For as by one man's disobedience, that's Adam. Many were made sinners. That's a lot to walk through in the time. That's a lot to walk through. We, we've suffered through the prolonged problems of sin. And that's a, a bad, an abrasive, a disruptive, and a discomforting deal. A deal whose hand would have played us straight to the depths of hell. Amen. But thank God for his grace. Amen. Oh man, I, I just said something powerful there. <laughs> After all of that right there, thank God for his grace. Amen. 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 
uh, let, let, me, let me say this real, real quick. In, in my research on Romans chapter 5, I came across the following notes from the Baker Illustrated Bible Commentary, and I quote, and this is, this is their words, not mine. In this section, Adam stands for the sinfulness of all humanity, while Jesus Christ stands for God's solution to the problems of the human condition. See Romans chapter 3, verses 21 uh, through chapter 5, verse 11. In Romans chapter 5 and 12, Paul sets up a contrast between two men. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, Adam and Jesus. One man, Adam, is responsible for the sin of the world resulting in death, which has spread to all people. Death is described as an unnatural state because it was not originally a part of the world. It entered God's creation through Adam, whose name means man. Death is both physical and spiritual. Amen. Death is both physical and spiritual yes. and is the reference to condemnation. Amen. When Adam sinned, he was separated from God's immediate presence, as we see in Genesis chapter 3. Adam is responsible for the presence of sin in the world, and he is responsible for the presence of death. Yes. Wow. End quote. Are you still wondering what's the big deal? Well, let me make another U-turn. And we're going to go right back to this text. This time in its entirety. And if you haven't noticed, this will be about the fourth or fifth time that we read through these scriptures. Are you ready? Watch the contrast. And please, don't get tired of hearing this word. Here it is. Wherefore, as by one man, who is Adam, yeah. sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so that death passed upon all men, that's us, for that all of us have sinned, yeah. for until the law, sin was in the world, yeah. but sin is not imputed where there is no law, uh -huh. in other words, since there was no list of commandments before the law, there was no strict accountability to hold it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Before Moses, there was no law. Come on. But still, man fell into this window of sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Even though there was no law, since the of man still fell in the window. Yeah. Of sin. Yeah. Even evident on a beautiful day like today. Yeah. <laughs> and we look good. Yeah. All of us yes. have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. 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 Nevertheless, verse 14 says, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Yeah. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even though, even though Enoch was taken up. Yeah. He was one of the two E's in the Bible, Enoch and Elijah, that didn't experience what we know as death. They were taken up, Sarah. Yeah. Even Enoch yeah. still yeah. fell in the window of sin. Yeah. Even Methuselah, yeah. old as Methuselah was, still fell under the effects of sin because Methuselah died. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Methuselah died. It might not have been a spiritual thing, but it was a physical thing because the clock, Maria, was already ticking. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. It yeah. rained from death to Adam, even those that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who, was, who is the figure of him that was to come. Yeah. Him that was to come is Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Him that was to come because of Adam's mess up was Jesus. Amen. Like Bible study on a Sunday. Keep walking with me. But not as the offense or unlike the offense, so also is the free gift. Watch this. For if through the offense of one, Adam, many be dead, us, much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. Amen. Okay, y'all don't know when to thank God. Yeah. Woo, that was a lot of work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 I'm going to put it in, in layman's terms. Adam 
messed us up. Yes, he did. Tore up from the floor. Yes. Jacked up and backed up. Yes. Put in reverse and run over again. Yes. Put in reverse and run over again. Right. Adam messed us all up to where we would not only experience a physical death, yes. but we could experience a spiritual death. Yes. But then God gave us Jesus.
much more about. Okay, maybe the third time with y'all. Um, raise your raise your hand. Raise your right hand. Raise any hand. Um, you're sinners. Congratulations. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And just in case everybody did, raise your hand again. Okay, now now raise your hand. Do this right here. I have fallen short of God's glory. Amen. So now I'm gonna say this again. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So where sin had had the world gripped, grace came along and undid what sin gripped up. Amen. Amen. Where, where, where sin had us all messed up, Jesus said, I'll give my life you, for yours you, and yours yeah. and yours yeah. and ours yeah. and mine. Yeah. And verse 21 said that as sin reigned unto death, uh -huh. even so grace reigned through the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Come on, give God a hand. The effective power of God's saving justification, according to the Bacon Commentary, of granted sinners who have committed countless sins to incomparably greater than the power of sin that resulted from a single transgression of one human being. While the descendants of Adam, it goes on to say, are controlled by the power of death, believers who belong to Jesus Christ receive the gift of grace, which they experience as righteousness and as dominion over the power of sin and death in this life and the life that is to come. Yes. Furthermore, justification and life for all people does not mean that every single human being is saved Amen. as a result Amen. of Jesus' death. Amen. Let me be clear, as President Obama used to say when he wanted to drive the points home, let me be clear. <laughs> let me be clear. I'm going to say that again. Uh, this justification of life for all people does not mean that every single human being is saved as a result of Jesus' death. It means that all those who belong to Jesus and have received openly the gift of God's grace and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Those people are the only people, are, are the only all people, I know that didn't sound right, are the only all people, that's, and that is because of God's grace will get a chance to go to heaven and last and live for an eternity with Jesus. Amen. 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 So what's the big deal as we get ready to come to a close? We've had some prolonged problems, but God graced us with an eternal solution. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, yes. we have liberation. We're unchained and set free from our past. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have elevation. We can now reign with him instead of being apart from him. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have education. Because the Holy Spirit provides us direction and wisdom. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have compensation. Wherever we're weak, he's strong enough to take up our slack. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have motivation. God inspires us. God gives us hope. God gives us purpose. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have regeneration. Because we've been transformed to live a life in the supernatural instead of just the natural. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have activation. Send me, Lord, I'll go. I'll obey your command because I know that you're going to be with me. And I'm glad that we've been liberated. I'm glad that we've been elevated. I'm glad that we now got word to educate us. 
I'm glad that we've been compensated by the Lord. I'm glad that I could be motivated to run on. I'm glad that I've been regenerated. I'm glad that now I can be activated. And because I'm activated, I can go into action for my Savior. I'm glad that because we're sin abound, grace did much more about it. I'm glad because where sin had us, grace came along and wrapped us up. I'm glad because where sin had us throw up from the floor, Jesus put us all back together again. Jesus came and walked amongst us. Jesus did a, a mighty work. Oh yes, I'm glad because grace went further. Grace can go further. Grace is further. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you, I'm glad that where sin did abound. I'm going to say it again. Grace did much more abound. Anybody glad they got grace? What's the big deal? God's grace. What's the big deal? Jesus' sacrifice. What's the big deal? Going from guilty to not guilty. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And for that, we should give God praise. Maybe you're here today. Yes. And you're questioning whether or not this Jesus that we worship is a big deal. Uh -huh. Maybe you're watching online. Come on. Not even understanding what Palm Sunday meant, means to the Christian. Girl. It was the week before Jesus was going to make that sacrifice. Uh -huh. It was that Sunday before that he was going into the city. Yes. And he was prepared to be the example Hallelujah. that the world would never forget. Mm -hmm. Amen. The one that gave his life yes. Yes. and then took it back. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't understand what that means. Maybe you're still shrugging your shoulders like, what is the big deal? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know why Jesus is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Today we can help you. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, outside the doors under, my, under the sound of my voice, or even watching online, mm -hmm. we can help you. Get introduced to a Savior that will walk with you, that will talk with you. Yes. That as the word says, that he will, if you open up the door, he'll come in and he'll sup with you. Yes. And then you'll find out by this Jesus, whom we serve and worship, yes. whom we love, is truly yes. a big deal. Yes. If that's you, come. If that's you, type in, in the chat, type in the, in the, in the, word, the words. On, the, on Facebook. If that's you, let us know and we will walk with you. God is a good God. God is a great God. God is an amazing God. And he is a big deal. We had prolonged problems, but we've got a problem solved. Thank you. God bless you. Jesus Christ, the big 
missed it, but when he said it, he that believeth uh, in God shall never die. So in other words, Enoch died or left the scene, but God saved him. They didn't have to wait till Jesus come. Yes, yes. Jesus came. <laughs> yes. That salvation yes. came ahead of him. Come on. Huh? Because of the fact uh -huh. that the guys that we see that, uh -huh. well, even with Paul, yes. Yes. Uh, God used him in glory. Come on now. Bless <laughs> <Yes>. you. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, that we want to get out of here, but most of us want to stay. <laughs> huh? That's our big problem. We, we want what God did, got for us, but we want to stay here on earth. Amen. This life has got to go. Yes, Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Yes, Thank sir. you, God. Yes, Amen.
Um, Shamika and Terrence would love to have every one of you all here at their wedding ceremony. However, the reception is by invitation only due to the size of the family and the limitations at the reception hall. So please um, respect those wishes, but please join in them at Shiloh for their wedding ceremony. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ridgecrest Community um, Cook Friday service will be held on Friday, April 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church here in Largo, where Reverend William McClendon is the pastor. They have put together a Good Friday choir with all the combined choirs in the Ridgecrest community, the next rehearsal will be on Tuesday, April 12th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Shiloh. The Deaconess Ministry of Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church invites you to their Women's Day on April the 24th, 2022 at 3 o'clock p.m. It's not just for the women, all are invited. Yours in Christ, Sister Eunice Collins, President. Bethel Missionary Baptist Church Pastoral Installation, Bishop Al Baldwin of Bishop Alan Baldwin Jr. on Sunday, April 24th at 4 o'clock p.m. Class A attire, women are to wear white. Behind on your mortgage, contact Suncoast Housing Collections. We teach, we lend, we build. Mortgage and utility payment assistance is available to help Clearwater residents. Um, mortgage assistance and one-on-one -on -one counseling for those who might be leaving forbearance and or facing foreclosure. Applicants must live in Clearwater city limits and must have been impacted by COVID. Certain eligibility requirements apply. To learn more about these programs, you can call 727-442-7075. Our activities here at St. Mary are as follows. Our midweek services start on Wednesday night with prayer service at 6 p.m. And then following prayer service, we have Bible study. We are in the midst of our new study series, which is entitled Boot Camp. And it has definitely been boot camp. And we are so excited. We have been just encouraged and been expanding in knowledge. We have been growing in the word, and we are inviting each and every one of you all to come out and join in in our Bible study. On this coming week, we'll be studying about getting to know God. You know, all of us think we know something when it comes to the word, but we've been learning here on Wednesday night that it's some stuff we just don't know. Amen. And it's some stuff that we just don't have clarity on that we have been getting clarification on. So we encourage you all I'm telling you, our Bible study teaching team does a fantastic job, and we want to have you all here with us as we grow in the Word. So we're going to be talking about God in three persons. We'll be talking about God's attributes. We'll be talking about, I mean, it's just so rich, God's character. There's just so much for us to learn about Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we think we know that we might not know. So come on out and, get, and be encouraged as the words say, iron sharpens iron. So if you are maybe a scholar, maybe you can come help some of the rest of us who are still trying to learn and expand. So you all are encouraged to come out to Bible study on Wednesday at 630. Please remember those on our prayer list, Mother Boatwright, Mother Philanna, Sister Rose Williams, Sister Tanisha Williams, Sister Hattie McAfee, Brother Willie McAfee, Sister Fran Fowler, Sister Gloria Benton, Brother Yvonne Strouder, Sister Valerie, the Ennises, those who are traveling, those who are bereaved, please keep them all in your prayers. Also, um, we still here at St. Mary are wearing our masks and taking our temperatures because we want this to be a place where you all can come and worship and fellowship and feel safe and, and be excited and on fire for the Lord. So thank you all for still um, being willing to do that and come and join in with us. Do we have any omitted announcements? I have an omitted announcement, but I would like to see the deacon answer uh, right after church about five to ten minutes. Okay. Anybody else? Any birthdays or anniversaries to miss? Amen. Do we have any visitors with us today? We ask you to please stand to be acknowledged. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in with St. Mary today. We ask you to continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Have a safe and blessed week.